Hello and welcome to Gimmer Bushcraft. Nice to see you again. I'm in Royal Forest. The weather is not uh, particularly good. It's a cloudy day today in the, in the northern part of Jutland where I live, but it's a little bit hot too, so I'm sweating a lot uh, when I'm carrying my uh, rucksack. Yeah. And this is a video in my uh, series Bushcraft for Me to Sit in random order, and uh, this time it will be about the letter W, a wool. And uh, yeah, but first I took my hammock with me. I want to put it up so I can lay there and enjoy the forest here. There's a lot of nice birds sounds out here. Yeah, a uh, wonderful place. So let's get the hammock up. Today I'll make a little lunch. I have some green bell pepper, some champignon, sausage, and uh, some small tomatoes. And I'll use these sticks uh, so I can grill them, I think. And then I'll call them grill sticks. And uh, so, I'll start with this one. I'm not going to use so much here. Mmm, delicious. Yeah, and a tomato. Yeah, and I'm making three of these. Thank <laughs> you. 
and one of my wonderful subscribers sent me this. It is Scotty, the same guy that sent me the uh, salve. Uh, he found these uh, and sent me one of those. It's a piece of fat wood, you can see it's really nice and it's a big piece. And I'll try to light my fire today using this. Yeah. And I found this piece of bark and then I'll see if I can scrape some fat wood on this. This is enough. Yeah, here we go. We just have to have some birch bag on. Some small tricks here. Yeah, and now I think the coals are glowing, so I just have to wait till the last flame has died out, and then I can put them on. Now I think I can put them over here. They are a little bit big. Squeeze them together, and I think you'll. Yeah, that's okay. It's looking good. Now I think they are ready, well done. I'm very hungry. Yeah. And then I'll put my kettle over. Yeah, let's eat.
Call everyone. We better get this fire started again so we can have our coffee. I think there's a lot of resin in this uh, wood. <clears throat> it is bruised, so yeah, and I can I can smell it. So
and look at this, a new lighter. I got, I got it from a friendly subscriber, he called himself the Baron, and it's a really cool lighter. It's a pipe lighter, you can see here. Um, it's made of brass, and I'm sure you know I love brass. And it's an old school lighter, made in the 50s, I think, just after the World War II. Um, and inside here, there's a little wick. And when I do this, yeah, you can see. And that's why it's a pipe lighter, because when I soak this, the fire will go down in the tobacco. I'll show you, just a minute. Mmm, a cool little lighter. Mm? Very useful when you are a pipe smoker like me. Yeah, and as I said in the beginning, this is a, a video in my series Bushcraft for me to set. And I've chosen today, it should be about wool. And it's actually my good friend Lonnie that have uh, uh, suggested that. So thank you very much Lonnie, I appreciate that very much. Yeah, and uh, wool, yeah. You all know what wool is. Uh, it's something you can uh, cut off. Uh, sheep and uh, other animals actually, yeah. And ever since I began my uh, Viking journey, uh, I bought a lot of wool uh, clothes and I found out that it's, uh, yeah, it's very great. I love it. Uh, it had so many properties that uh, uh, you can use it in uh, hot conditions, in wet conditions and in uh, cold conditions. Uh, it's actually very uh, durable for all kind of weather. And here's some info about the wool, the history and so on, and uh, maybe you can learn a, a thing or two, uh, some things that you didn't know before. Uh, I actually learned something, yeah. Wool is the textile fiber obtained from sheep and other animals, including cashmere and mohair from goats, angora from rabbits, and other types of wool from camelites, which is camels, llamas, alpaca, and many other species. And human has been weaving and wearing wool since the 10,000 BC. Like the human civilization, the story of wool begins in Asian Minor during the Stone Age about 10,000 years ago. Primitive men living in the Mesopotamian plain used sheep for their basic human needs, food, clothing and shelter. Later on, man learned to spin and weave the wool. Woolly sheep were introduced into Europe in the early part of the 4th millennium BC. The oldest known European wool textile uh, about 1500 BC was preserved in the Danish Bok. Prior to invention of shears, probably in the Iron Age, the wool was plucked out by hand or by bronze combs. There are more than 1000 sheep breeds in the world. Breeds like the Merino sheep originated in Spain. Today, Australia produces 80% of the merino wool used in luxury fashion around the world. Australian merino wool is the world's finest and softest wool in the world. Its natural benefits are so great that no other fiber, nature or man-made, can match it. Although wool textiles is a fantastic fabric, it currently only accounts for 1.1% of the world's global fiber market. Wool goes far beyond fashion. It can also be used to produce carpets, other interior textiles such as beddings, upholstery, and isolation, and protective garments worn by firefighters and soldiers. Sheep's wool is less expensive than many other wools. It is very durable, maintains its shape when stretched, is color fast when dying, and unlike most synthetic fiber, it doesn't melt when exposed to flame. It is great at trapping air and provides superior isolation, both against the cold and heat. Wool can absorb up to 40% of its own weight in water 
and release it the moment its exterior begins to dry. For this reason, a clothing garment made of wool can absorb body sweat, release it and become dry. Cotton, in comparison, can only retain 8% of liquids and synthetic fiber less than 3%. But what about the Vikings and wool? Wool was as much as part of their life at the sea and the ships. The Vikings were great sailors and fearsome warriors, but they couldn't have left port without wool. It provides the raw material for their clothes, their blankets, and even the sails that harnessed the wind for their ships. Their ship wool contained two main types of wool. There was a long outer covering of fibers that was coarse and hairy. These fibers shed rain and keep the animals dry. They were important in making textiles and could also be used for lightweight ropes, sewing thread, fishing lines, and not least, sails. Under the coarse fibers were shorter, fine fibers. These kept the sheep warm and were used for all manner of textiles, including padding for shoes. The underwool around the neck was used for underwear because of its softness. Viking sheep had colored wool. They were shade of brown from very dark to pale color and some white. The longer coarse fiber was usually darker than the soft underwool. That when these two fibers types were separated from each other, they made different color yarns. The Viking used this natural coloring to make design in the fabric, dark or light stripes or patterns. Yeah, hope you find this uh, little information video uh, useful. Perhaps you learned a thing or two. Uh, my experience with wool was started when I was a child. My mother uh, made me a wool um, sweater from Icelandic wool, and it was very, uh, it, it was itching, scratchy. I, I scratched myself all over because I didn't like to have it on. Uh, that's not the uh, case now. The wool uh, clothes I buy from Grimfoss and other places, it's very soft to have on, and uh, I don't have this uh, scratching anymore and uh, especially the merino wool is very soft to have on your body. The things that has surprised me most is when I'm uh, sweating, and you can see I'm sweating a lot when it's uh, warm outside. Uh, I don't get cold on my, uh, on my body because the uh, wool are absorbing the sweat, the moist, and, uh, and don't uh, cool me down as cotton do, or these kind of fabrics that I have on today. So I like, I love to have my uh, wool on when I'm making my uh, Viking stuff, and uh, it's really authentic to, yeah. Yeah, and I have a couple of updates on uh, some things that I know you are following. First of all, my uh, theft, my robbery out in my camp. I haven't got my stuff back yet. I have contacted the police. They have uh, talked to me and I've told them what I know and given them the footage from my camp so they can see uh, the man that I accused for have uh, stolen my things. It's a couple of months ago that I did that and I haven't heard from the police yet. Yeah, I'm not sure they will do much about that. And uh, uh, I don't think I'll get my stuff back and that's okay. Uh, I just hope that the man won't come back and steal uh, more from me. Uh, that is my hope. So I'm crossing my fingers for that and um, well, my camera out there gives me a little bit of security, yeah. Uh, and the next thing, my CX, my Viking knife that I have, have asked on my YouTube channel if someone was interested in, in making that for me and for you. And uh, I got a lot of response and I've picked out four uh, knife makers and sent them some material 
the design of the knife, the CX and the sheath, and I'm in uh, dialogue with them uh, about how it's going to be, and uh, in a while, perhaps first after uh, the summer vacation, uh, I'll see something from them, and then I'll decide which one of these four um, knife maker I will choose for making my CX. And uh, when the uh, deal is done, uh, you can order them from that uh, knife maker that I have chosen. So, and uh, uh, one of the uh, main issues about this knife is I want it to be not cheap, but uh, especially not expensive, because then I know a lot of you won't have uh, can afford to buy these. So I'm trying to uh, get the price as low as possible and still maintain a good quality and uh, of course my design. So, But I think in a month or two uh, it will be ready for uh, launching and you can order it. Uh, so hang on and uh, keep on uh, watching my videos and you'll get updates uh, along the way. And then uh, last thing, I'm uh, considering making my logo uh, different. You can see here how it looked uh, at the beginning and I made a little change uh, on it on the way so it's looking like this now but I would like to have a logo that is more uh, simple. Uh, my logo now is very difficult. I can't burn it with my laser burner and um, other stuff. So I want to make a logo that is very simple. Uh, of course I have some uh, thing I would like to have on it. So. Uh, if there anyone out there, uh, uh, designer, graphic designer or someone who's very good at drawing or have some good ideas, please send me an email and uh, if I find the right person, I will uh, make a collaboration with you and we can uh, develop or we can create a new logo for Kimber Bushcraft. I would like to do that. So if you have any ideas uh, or you're good at these things, please contact me and uh, we can talk on, uh, on our emails, yeah. Yeah, folks, this was all for now. Thank you for watching Kimba Bushcraft. I really appreciate that. Appreciate all your comments, your support and your kindness. It really warms my heart. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this little video and I hope to see you again on the next one. Bye bye and take care.